So in this lecture series, we shall learn about what exactly is the p-delta analysis and what are the practical significance of uh, this type of analysis and how we can do that in the start software. So before I start, you know, like doing p-delta analysis in the start software, I want to give you a brief introduction of what exactly is the meaning of p-delta analysis and what are the various types of uh, p-delta analysis. So first of all, I shall, uh, you know, like go to the CSI knowledge base here. Here, uh, the CSI has written this very, uh, you know, like good article about the p-delta analysis. So there are basically two types of p-delta analysis. So one is the capital uh, delta and, and, uh, the, and the second one is the small delta analysis. So basically here it is showing that uh, the simply supported beam P delta and cantilevered column P delta and cantilevered column P capital delta. So the thing that you know like first of all you should keep in mind that this is basically the small delta and this is basically the capital delta here. And uh, first of all, we shall learn about the simply supported beam P delta. So it is a local effect associated with axial load on displacement relative to the element called extending between N nodes. So we shall, you know, like see this picture here. So here it is saying that basically the, it is a simply supported beam here. On that simply supported beam, what we are doing is that we are applying an axial load of value P and uh, W UDL is already acting on that particular beam. So after application of this P here, what basically is happening here is that the beam is deforming here. So this is basically nothing but uh, P and this is delta here. So the value of the bending moment on this beam due to this W UDL is what we already learned in the textbooks in our college. That is W L square by eight. Second is the geometric stiffness contribution. That is this axial load P into this displacement delta here. So that is P delta. So the total uh, moment is nothing but Me plus Mg, that is Mt. So it is WL square by eight plus P into delta. So this is the simply supported beam P delta here. So that, you know, like that the simple thing that I'd explained here is written in somewhat complicated language here. So here it is saying that P delta is a local effect associated with the axial load that is this P on displacement that is this uh, delta relative to the element chord that is this particular line here extending between end nodes that is these are the two end nodes here. So the figure one explains the influence of P delta on a simply supported beam here a longitude and distributed load W correlates with elastic bending stiffness properties Ke to induce vertical displacement delta an additional flexural contribution comes from the relationship between this deformed configuration and axial load P. The geometric stiffness properties Kg, which dictates these properties are further you know, like discussed in, the, in this book here. So I hope the, you know, like things are clear with what exactly do you mean by simplest word beam P delta. Now we come to the main, you know, like main thing that we need to learn. Cantilevered column P delta and cantilevered column P capital delta here. Now, when we are observing P small delta effect on the cantilever column, response is shown in figure two. So here it is, uh, you know, like you can see that the, we are applying a force F here. The height of this column is L here. And uh, this is the axial load that is P. And due to this axial load P, it is in you know, like displacing, uh, displacing, uh, you know, like uh, in this particular direction here. And this value that is from this point to this point, it is small delta here. So before I, you know, like move on to this, uh, uh, all these calculations here, I want to show you the capital delta first. So this is the capital delta here. That is when we are, you know, like drawing two parallel lines here and then, uh, you know, like measuring the distance that is the small delta this particular uh, value here and when we are measuring the you know like simp in the displacement in a simple straight line that is the capital delta so when we are talking about this uh, type of displacement that is local deflection contribution to the bending moments 
that is called the small delta p, p small delta effect and when we are talking about the global displacement so in that particular case it is called p capital delta now we shall you know like uh, read the lines that have been written here so when we are observing p delta effects on a cantilevered column so response is shown in the figure 2 here that is m e is nothing but this uh, value into the height that is f into l and the uh, this uh, cantilever uh, this p small delta bending moment is nothing but p into delta so the total bending moment comes out to be f into l plus p into small delta you know like in the language of engineering this is called curvature so this single curvature uh, you know like displacement is the reason why we considered p small delta so according to this article the column seldom displaced with single curvature that is like this so more commonly especially with multi story building analysis and design by multi story building analysis and design we are talking about when we are you know, like either designing a steel slender structures or either we are designing a very high rise uh, rcc buildings cause in the case of single story or double story or three story building p delta effects are not uh, that much contributive to the total overall design so when we are talking about multi story building analysis and design column deform according to the third order cubic displacement pattern under double curvature so this line basically means that the columns no, does not get deformed in 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 the simple fashion here they deform according to the third order cubic displacement pattern under double curvature so after that in like they uh, we need to see this picture 3 here so the p small delta effect is much less pronounced because an inflation and inflation point intersected the element chord near midspan previously where displacement from chord was greatest so here you can see that basically what the they are trying to prove here is that this is the double curvature uh, here so when uh, usually in the rcc or you know, like when we are talking about a th like a three story structure here here you can see that there are double curvatures that is when the column is uh, going like this the column is again coming back like this and then again going like this and then again backing like this so this type of deflection is called double curvature or you know like this third order cubic displacement pattern so when the column gets displaced like this so in this particular pattern an inflection point that is the point this is called the inflection point where the displacement is zero so over in overall in simple words overall the uh, you know like deflect displacement uh, or the the small delta value becomes zero in the normal structures now when we talk about the p capital delta it is often of significance and it is also covered in various country codes that when you like when the height of the column becomes very high or when the bending moments become very high we do need to go with the second order analysis also called p delta analysis indian standards american standards euro standards put uh, you know like very much emphasis on using the p delta analysis when we are talking you know like modeling typical or you know like either slender structures or either very high rise building structures so uh, coming to the basics again so here it is saying that the double curvature pa displacement pattern is p de capital delta effect although displacement deviates from the element chord much less so basically the this is the element chord the, the lateral displacement associated with, with story drift is significant significant so this uh, in like this was the original location here it gets uh, displaced to this so this is called the capital delta here and with increasing level of drifts gravity load has a greater effect on mechanical behavior so p delta effect should be implemented during design whether static or dynamic linear or non linear so this is the final conclusion that uh, you know like etabs people are recommending that is when we are designing at the static or dynamic linear or not non linear for the precise analysis p delta effect should always be implemented so this is again the simple math f into l plus p into the delta value here so the total bending moment is nothing but f into l plus p into delta 
so this was the very good article uh, you know written by the csi uh, we uh, knowledge base after that we can again you know like read this again and another article by csi that is p delta effect so they have again you know like explained all the equations here this is also a very good image that they are uh, showing here so here you can see that this is the height of the column this is the capital delta this is the actual force p and this is the horizontal value h so here you can see that h capital h into small h that is this is the normal bending mo moment value that we study you know like or we already know after that this particular area here this is the capital delta into p bending moment contribution and this small uh, area here it is the basically the p into small delta contribution so when we are talking or like what exactly is the bending moment for this particular column here so one is the m g that uh, sorry this is the uh, you know like m e value here so where we can see that this is the m e value this is the bending moment due to capital delta and this is the bending moment due to small delta here so here we can see that p small delta effect is associated with local deformation so that is also a very good word to remember the what exactly do you mean by p small delta delta effect that is when we are referring to the local deformation under the relative to the element chord between end nodes so typically p small delta only becomes significant in unreasonably large displacement values or in especially slender columns so long as structure adheres to the slenderness requirements pertaining to the earthquake engineering it is not advisable to model p into small delta why because it may significantly increase computational time without providing the benefit of useful information so all the softwares do recommend that we should go with p into capital delta effect or big delta effect so this is the displacement relative to the, to the member ends that is this is the member end and unlike p small delta this type of p capital delta effect is critical to non linear modeling and analysis so as indicated uh, intuitively by figure 2 gravity loading will influence structural response under significant lateral displacement p capital delta may contribute to loss of lateral assistance ratcheting of residual deformations and dynamic instability so as shown in figure 3 effective lateral stiffness decreases reduces strength capacity in all phases of force deformation relationship so this is the figure that has been taken from atc to 2010 or uh, peer that is pacific earthquake engineering research institute and to consider p capital delta effect directly gravity loading should be present during the non linear analysis otherwise it is of uh, no use an application will cause minimum increase to computational time and it will remain accurate for drift levels up to 10 percent so this was the simple uh, you know like brief introduction to p capital delta and p small delta otherwise riza has also written uh, this very uh, good article about the p capital delta analysis if you think these articles are still you know like not clear to you you can refer to uh, riza uh, knowledge base and here they have you know like explained the p capital delta analysis again so here the again same math that this is the capital delta and the total bending moment is nothing but the contribution to the uh, static as well as this p into delta bending moment again they have introduced this p small delta also that is here they can see that this is the double curvature value here here again they have shown this double curvature and this was also a very important thing that is aisc direct analysis method so the aisc manual specifically requires the consideration of p little delta effect however the direct analysis method that i had already explained in you in the previous lecture inherently acknowledge the p little delta may not be important by stating that it may be neglected when the actual load in all members whose flexural stiffnesses are considered to contribute to the lateral stability of structures are less than the 15% of elastic or oiler buckling loading of the member so again aci concrete design also consider the non linear second order analysis elastic second order analysis and moment magnification method so i hope the things are now clear to you 
that is what exactly do you mean by p capital delta and p small delta analysis you can just uh, google this uh, and you can land onto this particular page here if required you may raise a question in the question answer section and i may attach, attach a pdf for this particular uh, you know like uh, web pages here so in the next lecture we shall learn uh, about what you know like what are the various type of towers and according to me towers are the structure which needs the p delta analysis the most so as if we want to learn the p delta analysis in the start pro so i want to teach you in a uh, somewhat more, more practical manner so for before we do the p delta analysis in the start i want to give you a practical introduction to what we shall model in the start and how we shall do the p delta analysis of it so there is this website called steeltowerschn.com so it is basically a chinese website so here they have explained various types of towers that is number one is the communication tower and uh, number two is the camouflage tower monitoring tower guide chimney tower cell support tower street pole solar panel packet electric transmission line tower integrated tower side lattice steel tower and microwave steel tower so first of all we shall start with communication tower so you must have seen them in your cities or in your villages there are many of them so the this is called basically the three legged lattice mass triangular radio telecom communication tower so here you can see that basically there are three legged three legs of this tower here that is 1 2 and 3 and there is this uh, lattice formation that has been formed here usually these towers are of a somewhat lower height as compared to the you know like conventional communication tower so that is what is named as three legged lattice mass triangular radio telecom communication tower and uh, after that we can study with ground telecommunication tower monopole tower and tubular communication tower so this is nothing but ground telecommunication tower page so here we can see that this is the type 1 material communication tower this is the type 2 and uh, there is this you know like new concept of monopole tower so it is nothing basically the places where we don't have much space like in big cities so in big cities what they do is that they make a simple monopole here instead of you know like making all this uh, truss arrangement which takes a lot of space also so they just you know like make a circular cylinder here and then uh, install the transmission tower or electric electrical tower on the top so this is the uh, top view here accordingly we can design for uh, the particular wind speed also so here we can see that this is the monopole tower and on that they have drawn this uh, or they have made this uh, lattice arrangement here and on that lattice arrangement they have you know like anchored the steel or transmission lines on the top so this is the base of the transmission tower after that this is the tubular uh, communication tower page so you can uh, you know like open this page from your system and then study accordingly after that this is somewhat uh, you know like a tower on the funny side that this is a comma flush tower so in the areas where the aesthetics are very important like we don't want to show anyone that there is a pole here so what we can do is that this pole may looks like a tree also so here also you can see that this is a steel pole on the top there is a comma flush after that we can see this monitoring tower page also so monitor towers are nothing but uh, you must have seen them in the movies also or if you uh, you know like live in the coastal area there are many of them in the beaches also so this is the steel uh, structure observation tower so basically in the start we shall model this steel uh, observation tower itself so it is a very simple uh, design that i will uh, that i will teach you and on this uh, arrangement we shall do the p delta analysis 
and here they have provided the basic drawings also that we will discuss in the next lecture but do uh, save this page here after that there is this uh, guide tower also that i had explained to you in the in the previous lecture when we were talking about the cable analysis so they are nothing but they take support from these cables so that is why they are very liked so here you can see that they have drawn you know they have been like model or fabricated these uh, points here and these points have been anchored from the guy wires here so this is the guy transmission tower this is also another example of guy tower so here you can see that there are various points which have been anchored with the help of wires after that chimney tower chimney tower is also a very important concept and uh, if you are a practicing engineer you may get almost design of one steel stacking tower like this every month so it is a very simple arrangement we we usually take these as angles here that uh, it may also provide a lateral support to the chimney st steel uh, tower or structure so this is also called a stacking structure chimney stack so here you can see that this is small stack structural tower so usually in the language of engineering it is called a stack stack tower so here we can see that uh, they have explained this that is it mainly supports the supported pipe body with the steel structure support frame the structure is self standing and wire drawn we i had already teach you about the solar panel brackets also that is uh, this is the typical ar arrangement here this is the portrait and this is the landscape and here you can see that the the solar panels are mounted on the ground itself so this is the electric transmission line tower here this is basically the integrated tower arrangement after that we already know the lattice steel tower arrangement that we had already seen in universities and this is the microwave steel tower or microwave communication tower so here you must have seen these type of towers uh, in your cities so they are basically the communication towers and uh, if you want to you know, like uh, learn more about them you can just open each and every picture and then you can read the explanation that has been given here basically and this is a chinese website so that is why when you will you know, like open see the design codes here you will see that this is a gb or here you can see that it is referring to uh, gb here so that is why they are referring to all the chinese standards but otherwise also whatever is missing in the chinese uh, codes they are referring to the astm a153 or new zealand standards or european standards here so as 235 jr is nothing but uh, the european structural steel name so i hope things are now clear to you that is uh, what are the communication towers or the transmission towers how they are made and if you want to see the videos also they are in you know, like they have uploaded very uh, good videos here that is how these communication towers are made so you can see this video here so here you can see that they have they are installing a very large transmission tower on a very hilly area here you can see that how uh, tough job is this basically they these are the four very large angles and this is basically the bracing that they had made here and to break the slenderness or you know like to make this member strong or to break the major axis so what they have done is that they had installed a triangular bracing arrangement here and this is nothing but uh, when we are installing the bracing here so th here these three holes are the pro to provide the connection between this brace here and this um, main member here here you can see that this this member and this member has already been joined here and these uh, boards are to join the upper and lower part so here also basically we are making the transmission towers it's not like they are self supporting while in construction stage also we do need to provide some lateral restraint here 
so that is why uh, in the stage of execution these guys are uh, anchoring the whole arrangement from the foundation or from the soil so here you can see that this whole transmission line towers are installed here so this is a very tough job i must say here and a very risky job also so basically uh, in the some previous lecture also i had modeled this arrangement here so it is nothing but basically the thing is that when you know, like the transmission line towers are ang being anchored into this uh, uh, transmission tower so these transmission lines are anchored here so So this is basically the transmission tower as with the capacity. So here you can see that this is the 220 kV double circuit LST. So the height range is 110 to 200 feet. This is a 500 kV double circuit LST. So the height range of this is 150 to 215 feet. And this is a 500 kV single circuit LST. The height range is 80 to 200 feet. So the, the all these texts is also good if you want to learn more about them. So this is 500 kV lattice angle tower design and test construction. So here we can see that this is the 500 kV arrangement that we had already seen in the drawing here. So here you can see that the, uh, this panel is already prefabricated and this prefabricated panel is being installed on the top of this already uh, fabricated or already installed transmission tower. So this is nothing but this uh, slings. And uh, the helicopter is uh, transporting this uh, top of the transmission tower arrangement here transmission tower is now completed so I hope the things are now clear to you so now in the next lecture we shall uh, try to model the watch tower arrangement here so we shall I shall introduce you to all this drawings here in the next lecture so in the previous lectures we have learned much about the uh, basics of the steel towers how they are used and how they are made now in this lecture we shall uh, you know like try to model this uh, typical watchtower this is the elevation of the watchtower here you can see that there are various levels uh, let, let us uh, there are one two three four and five into three thousand that is fifteen thousand mm and this five meter is basically the lightning rod that is always installed on the top of the watchtower to protect the person who is sitting inside from the lightning here also you can see that there are various uh, bracket uh, system here and basically the purpose of this uh, is the platform so that the person who is you know like uh, sitting here can easily observe the surroundings so this is basically the lightning arrangement here you can see that this is basically 3 meter plus 2 meter so the total height of this uh, lightning protection arrangement is uh, 5 meters here and this is basically the tube in tube system so basically there is one tube that is uh, larger in diameter second tube is the smaller in diameter this symbol denotes the break that is the total length is 3 meter 
and uh, it is also supported with the help of these brackets here so this is the uh, lightning protection arrangement in the plan view here and uh, this is basically the base of the tower so on the base the dimension is 6 meters and uh, here we can see that basically this is the 6 uh, meter dimension and this is the 3 meter height so what they had did is that they had uh, you know like uh, modeled this v shape bracing and then they had uh, broken this bracing into uh, two parts and after that this is the um, detail of this particular area here so here you can see that uh, this is the uh, gusset plate and on the gusset plate they have you know like joined these two members here and this is the basically the area uh, which is shown in the form of brackets so this area and that is from this point to this point this is the area and that is coming from this point to this point so i hope things are now clear to you that how a watch tower is uh, made and this is the bracket that has been shown here and here you can see that this is the uh, you know like railing and a railing approximate height is one meter this is the typical arrangement of staircase Obviously, if a person has to, you know, like uh, reach to the top, then obviously he needs a staircase. So this is the staircase that is coming from bottom to top. And in the start model, we don't basically need to model this uh, staircase, but we can put the dead load and live load that shall be acting on the structure. This is basically the foundation view. So in the foundation, you can see that they have uh, made this uh, pedestal and they have made this foundation here. They have also given the reinforcement. And if you know Chinese, you can you know like read what exactly is written here. So this is the detailed view. This is basically the lightning protection arrangement. This is the basically the civil part. That is the pedestal and the foundation part. And this is the basically typical arrangement in the uh, you know like uh, elevation and plan view. So basically uh, what we will do is that we will try to model this whole arrangement in the form of start. We shall not you know like be 100% uh, be matching with what exactly is being drawn here. But we shall be trying to get as much close as possible to what exactly is shown here. Here it is showing, showing that it, the top dimension is 3130 by 3130. So what we can understand here is that and on the bottom the the area is 6 meter by 6 meter and on the top the area is 3 meter by 3 meter here it is showing that being showing b equal to 3000 and here it is showing b3750 b4500 and b5250 so how we can make this uh, watch tower in the start and that we will uh, study right now so now we need to open the start and select the joint coordinates the 1 0 and 0 and you know it says meter in kilo newton and after that what we can do is that we can just uh, you know like press ctrl c ctrl v option on keyboard and select xx 6 meters here and then we need to select zs 6 meters so basically what we are doing here is that we are drawing the bottom face here so now uh, we can go to this add beam option here so now what we can do in addition to that is that we can select the midpoint also so we can just draw two beams here go to geometry intersect selected members and intersect and after that what we can do is that we can just uh, press y as 12 meters because basically the height of the tower is 1 2 3 and 4 into 3000 that is 12 meter up to here so after that what we can do we can just Press Ctrl C, Ctrl V option, and uh, we can see here is that uh, that on the top the width is approximately three meters. So we need to select X as 1.5 and Z as 1.5 again. Now we need to select Z as minus three, and again we need to select X as minus three. So we can just uh, you know like join all of these beams here and uh, basically we can check in both the views here so now the view, uh, you know like uh, whatever we have we have modeled is correct and after that 
what we need to do is that we can just uh, draw a beam from this point to this point here divide this whole height into various uh, dimensions here. so the purpose of this beam is that we can right click here left click on insert node and select add n equal to three points here so now we have got three six three meters six meters and nine meters so after that what we can do is that we can uh, go to geometry add beam by perpendicular intersection So here we can see that the uh, dimension is 5.25. So 5.25 divided by 2 is 2.625. So we can select x as 2.625 and z again as 2.625. So here we can see that now this uh, member is automatically intersected. And after that, again we can select x as 2.625 and z as minus 2.625 and then we can select both the nodes and select access minus 5.25 so we can again join all of these beams here so after that we uh, you know like go to this particular point here and here we can see that uh, the dimension is 4.5 meter so what we need to do here is that we need to select access 2.25 and z again is 2.25 we can select this node and select z as minus 4.5 and then again select x as minus 4.5 so now we need to draw beams here after that uh, we, uh, for the top face here we can see that the dimension is 3.75 meters so we can select this particular uh, node here and select x as 1.875 z again is 1.875 and then we can select z as minus 3.75 and then we can select both of these uh, nodes here and select x as minus 3.75 and then again we can draw this floor here And now we can check in both the views here so now the view looks correct and we can delete this beam here because the purpose of this beam is now solved and after that what we can do is that we can draw the bracings here so basically here we can see that they, these are just simple cross braces here that has that have been drawn so Or we can select this whole arrangement here so that uh, the things are much more clear here all the you know like beams have been drawn braces have been drawn if we select this arrangement here here also all the braces have been drawn here also it is correct and here only two braces are missing so now this uh, whole this part of uh, wash tower has been modeled but now we basically need to model this arrangement here also so here we can see that the braces arrange bracing arrangement is different 
so what we need to do here is that we can just you know like select all these uh, beams here left click on insert node add midpoint left click on ok and then draw bracing like this and after that we need to draw an arrangement like this so we shall need a midpoint of this beam and this beam so uh, we shall need be a midpoint of this uh, this beam and this beam so left click on insert node and add midpoint we do need the midpoint of the bracing also because otherwise we shall not be able to intersect it So now this whole arrangement has been drawn and after that we need to draw this arrangement at the top and we need also need to draw this uh, platform uh, you know like at this 12 meters level so before that we can draw you know like model this simple arrangement here so what we basically need to do is that we just need to select all these uh, giants here and as height as 3 meters here so we need to do the translation repeat along y and select default step spacing as 3 meters and left click on link steps here so we can just join all of these uh, nodes here so now we need to draw the apex point of the uh, like this arrangement also so what we can do is that we can just draw a cross brace here go to geometry intersect selected members and intersect we shall know uh, you know, like get the midpoint here and here we can see that the height of uh, you know, like the fr from this point to this point is approximately one meter here so we can select this part, uh, particular point y as one meters and then we can draw beam arrangement like this so i hope things are now clear to you that how we can draw you know like this type of washed over arrangement we can select the beams at the bottom most point also so now we have drawn a simple washed over here coming back to our model here now we have just copied whatever has been drawn here except for the this platform area the width of this platform area is in the range of approximately 500 mm 3130 and 5 meter 5 meter minus 3 meters approximately 2 meters so it, uh, we are left with approximately 900 to 1 meter mm here it was 1000 mm here so what we can do is that we can just draw this uh, platform here so platform shall be at this particular level so we can select z as 1 meters here And then again we can select both of these nodes here and then select uh, z as minus one meter and then again we can select both of these nodes and x as minus one meter and then again x as one meter And then we can just draw an arrangement like this. And if we want to check this arrangement at the this particular level here, here we can see that now the 
this type of diagram is matching with this diagram but only difference is that we have not drawn these particular beams here. so that also we can uh, draw in the next stage but before that i want to draw a correct skeleton of the whole wash tower so what we can do we can also the length of this beam, beam is approximately three meters so we can insert node and distance we can add it at 0 0.75 meters because basically the orientation remember is like this so we can you know like draw a bracing like this and then again we can select all of these beams here left click on insert node distance 0 0.75 and then left click on ok so now we can draw bracing like this So I hope the, the basic arrangement is clear to you that how we can draw the skeleton of the watchtower. And after that, if we want to draw this floor here, so basically this is the cutout of the, cutout of the staircase. So we can select this whole floor arrangement here. Here we can see that the designer has made uh, these two beams here. So we can select, uh, you know, like this arrangement into insert node and add and equal to three points. So we can go to geometry, add beam by perpendicular intersection. And uh, one, two, three and four. Insert node, add and equal to three points. So we can go to geometry, add beam by perpendicular projection. So now we can uh, say that this is basically the cutout of the staircase and all of the flooring arrangement has been drawn and we can again you know like break this particular uh, platform and also into various junctions. The more we will tie any uh, you know like structural steel uh, structure the more stronger it shall be. Uh, tying can be either in the form of secondary beams or either it can be in the form of bracings. So this is the arrangement that has been drawn and if we want to check this here arrangement here. So here we can see that this is uh, somewhat not sufficient for the entry of the shagas because the minimum width of the is approximately in the range of 900-1200 mm. So we can go to geometry, move and member we can select Z as 0.3 meters and left click on retain connections here. So now we can see that uh, in like the somewhat the width of the staircase is okay. So after that, now this arrange floor arrangement has also been drawn. This uh, bracing has also been drawn. So in the next lecture, we shall learn how we can assign the, you know, like first of all, we are done with all the geometry option here. Let us check. So now this arrangement has been drawn. This arrangement has also been drawn. This lightning rod, we are skipping it purposely. This is the civil part. And this is basically the arrangement at uh, or plan at this particular level here. That is three meters here. So here we can see that the designer, what he has done is that he had tied uh, in this whole arrangement along the uh, like plan also. So basically he has drawn a platform here from this point to this point. So that also we can uh, make this arrangement here. So in this picture, if we see here is that uh, the, he has provided a landing for the staircase here. And then again, he has provided a landing for the staircase here. And then again, a landing for the staircase here. And then again, uh, you know, like this is just a simple entry to the uh, this uh, platform here. And then again, the designer, sorry, the, you know, like the person can enter from the bottom of this point here. So what we can do here is that 
uh, we can either draw an arrangement like this or we can just you know like simply model the uh, landings here so what we can do is that we can draw a number one landing here at this particular level Go to geometry, add beam by a perpendicular intersection. And after that, the landing shall be on uh, this side here, and that is on the left. And here at this point, we can see the width of the landing is approximately in the range of 1.3 meters. So what we can do is that we can just simply repeat this beam at x equal to 1.2 meters. So this is just a simple landing here. We can go to geometry, add beam by, or we can do is that. We can left click on insert node, add two points here. Go to geometry, add beam by perpendicular projection. Again, we can select this particular beam here. Select X as minus 1.2 meters. Left click on insert node, add end points. Go to geometry, add beam by perpendicular intersection. And after that, person can just enter to the, the watchtower arrangement here. And if we want to see the arrangement of in like this particular level here, here also we can see that there's a simple bracing arrangement that has been drawn here. So what basically the designer has done is that he has also braced this particular level here. So either we can draw a bracing like this or rather we can draw a V bracing. So now the uh, things are much more simpler and much more clear. So I must say that there's a five to ten percent deviation of what exactly has been you know like uh, given here. But as a designer, you have full right to do whatever he want to do. So in the next lecture, uh, you know like in this lecture, we have just modeled all the beams here. In the next lecture, we shall learn how we can assign the correct specifications to this watchtower arrangement here. So in this lecture, we shall learn how we can we can assign the specifications to this type of structure. So understanding specification is also you know like very important for uh, good practicing or for uh, good modeling practice in the start software. So first of all, what we can do is that we can just select all the bracings here, and we can go to beam release MYMZ at starting point, and I, again and an mymz so we can assign the release to both of these members here so now the bracing has been assigned here but uh, we also need to assign bracing to this particular member here so we need to sign releases we can assign both start and end point here after that, we need to assign release to, uh, to this member here also. So now the releases have been assigned to all of these bracing members here. Now the release need also needs to be assigned to uh, both of these bracings here, here also. Some people must be thinking why we are not assigning truss sections to both of these bracings. As I had discussed in the previous lectures also, 
that uh, no matter we assign trust to this member but in any case a very minor bending moment can come on this particular member here so but you know like uh, with this approach it is much more practical as compared to you know like we go with the stress approach here so we can select this, these brackets here also and we can assign start and end mymz I know there must be a lot of questions in your mind that how we are you know like going with all of these releases here so if you have any question feel free to ask in the in the question and answer sections basically all of these beams are simply supported beams this thing also I had explained in the previous lectures that how we can understand where and how to release the members and uh, we can also assign releases to these members here So now basically the, uh, you know like this is the main beam from this point to this point that we had only reached the starting point and end point this is the main beam again again starting in end release only same for this and same for this beam here and after that this these are basically the secondary beams here that we are talking about and these are the tertiary beams that is very small beams so we also need to assign releases to these members here So now this release approach is correct and uh, the releases have also been assigned to the bracings here. So now the all of the releases have been assigned after that we can go to the support here. So support I you know like in this type of uh, criteria it is desirable that we go ahead with pin support only not fixed support. So now the specifications are done, support is done. In the next lecture, we shall learn how we can assign the properties or either how we can predict the properties of this type of watchtower arrangement here. So in the previous lecture, we have learned how we can assign the specifications. So in this lecture, we shall learn how we can assign or how we can predict the properties that can be you know like used in this type of structure. So in reality you must have seen various transmission towers also so most of them are made with the help of angle sections only so and those angle sections are either in the form of double angles or either in the form of star star angles so we can uh, left click on section database here we can select British angle here we can select either angles with uh, both the legs of same sizes 80 88 means that if we are drawing an angle section here so uh, this dimension is also 80 this dimension is also 80 and the thickness is 8 mm so here we can select let us suppose 100 110 here we can select long leg back to back double angle long leg short leg does not matter in the case of this uh, when the both the legs are of same size but it do matters when we are talking about this type of section here that is 200 112 so if we uh, use this long leg back to back double angle means that the 200 mm dimension shall be uh, common among both the angles so coming back to our case here so ua 100 110 means both the uh, legs of the angle are of 100 mm and the thickness is also 10 mm and clear spacing we can predict to be let us say 0 0.010 that is 10 mm a plate is usually installed with between the both the angles so we can select 10 mm spacing here and let click on add here so we can select uh, this vertical member here as the 100 110 member So 
left click on assign and yes so with this approach we have assigned double angle to these members so we can go to asymmetric view also so here we can see that this dimension is also 100 this dimension is also 100 and the thickness of uh, this angle section is 10 mm that is from this point to this point and this uh, side is also 10 mm thickness so it uh, might be that most of you are not familiar with the structural steel section shapes and sizes so i will suggest you to at least go to the google and research about the basic types of I, uh, the structural steel sections they can either be of i shape they can either be of angular shape that is the one that we are drawing here they can also be in double angle shape that uh, we have we are seeing here they can be in the form of channels or square hollow sections rectangular hollow sections so it is better that uh, you know like you should have basic knowledge of structure sheet sections before we design this type of structure here so this is just uh, you know like uh, practice that we are uh, doing here that most of the times it is that this member is either single angle or double angle sections this is a bracing that we have drawn here bracings are also either in the form of uh, ang single angle double angle single channel double channel back to back or um, channel in front to front that is in the shape of the box so we can go to section database again for this angle we can select uh, 75 75 8 double angle so we can go to british here angle ua 75 75 8 long leg back to back double angle we can select 10 mm spacing here left click on add here and then we can just select all of these members here so by clicking here uh, you know like you can see that both the members are selected similar is the practice that we can follow here that by clicking on uh, one plane we will see that both the angles are selected here so we can uh, check the isometric view also so here we can see that this dimension is of 75 mm this dimension is 75 mm and the thickness of the angle is 8 mm this section because its length is very low we uh, we can use single angle sections also so we can use in this case either 50 50 angle or 65 single angle or 75 single angle so to make the thing sim simple what we can do is that we can go to british angle and select 75 75 8 single angle that is single section from table left click on add here so we can select all of these members here and left click on assign and yes so if we want to see this whole view in the isometric so here we can see that this type of arrangement has been drawn that is uh, this is also a double angle this is also double angle and this is uh, the single angle section so similarly we can arrange the, this tie member also so this tie can be made uh, with the help of 75 75 8 only and uh, similarly for uh, this this and this we can select different properties so we can go to section database here please note that the length of this bracing is less whereas the length of this bracing is uh, much larger as compared to this so the requirement of this bracing that is the size of this bracing shall be higher as compared to the size of this bracing because although maybe the force on this bracing is higher because it is on the bottom but the due to the uh, in larger length of this member the strength of the steel section decreases that is in simple word the more the length of a particular structural steel member the lesser shall be its strength so what we can do here is that we can go to section database we can go to british angle and we can select 1998 long leg back to back double angle so we can select these four members here and similarly these four members here so we can assign these members property and similarly we can go up 
and uh, we can again assign the same section properties to this then we can go to section database again we can go to British angle and UA 60-65 long leg back to back double angle and similarly we can model these time members as 75-75-8 Similarly, the platform is also modeled with that particular member. Now, if we want to check that whether there are any missing properties in this uh, tower section, so we can go to select by missing attributes and missing property. So here we can see that this member property is still missing. So we can select 75, 75, 8 here. After that, all the missing properties are of this particular uh, area so this bracket we can select it to be let us say 75 75 8 only similarly we can select the whole framing arrangement here here we need to see what are the main members what are the secondary member and what are the tertiary members so this is also a very important concept in structural steel members that how you distribute the usage and accordingly how you assign the releases and accordingly how you assign the properties we have distributed the arrangement here we can press shift plus k to see the nodes here so here we can see that this is the main beam of uh, 3 meter by 3 meter here so these four beams are the main beams that are being tying from column to column number one number two is this member that is from this point to this point so this is the secondary beam so these three beams are the secondary beams and all of these uh, you know like small members are the tertiary beams here so we can go to again section database we can go to British angle 100 108 Similarly, we can select uh, 50, 55 sections also. 75, 75, it is already selected here. We can select this uh, 120, 120, 10 also. So we can assign main beams as 120 and 120 and 10. Secondary beams can be assigned as angle section of 100 and 100. And tertiary beams we can assign it to be of 50 angle. Please note that all of these members are shall behave like a beam. Unlike these members shall, that shall behave like a compression member or a tension member but these members are the members that shall behave like beams so accordingly we do need to check the behavior uh, their behavior also after analyzing so similarly this uh, member we can assign it to be 100 108 also although it is very much on the higher side After that we can assign this 75-75-8 uh, properties here. We can go to select by missing attributes and missing property. So we can assign 75-75-8 to these uh, two members also. After that we can select this particular part here so desirably uh, the members that are coming from the bottom that is 100 100 and uh, 10 double angle should be continued to the top
and uh, this tie member can be 100 110 double angle we can assign double angle of 90 to in this particular placing here so we can go to select by missing attributes and missing property so all the properties have been assigned so now in this lecture we have learned how we can predict the properties that uh, can be you know like assigned to this type of uh, tower structures so in the next lecture we shall learn how we can assign the loading parameters in this lecture we shall learn how we can assign the loadings as per the India standards so first of all we should go to general load and definition here we will see that there are various options number one is the definition load cases details and load envelopes so we can go to definitions left click on seismic definitions add here there are various countries either we can go over algerian canadian chinese colombian or ibc that is american standard here asc 710 here we can enter the uh, zip code and accordingly it will calculate the sss1 values tl value ie rx rz and side class that we can uh, refer from ASCE uh, 07 and uh, period also we can calculate but in this lecture we are doing as per the indian standards so we can here select the zone as 0.16 response reduction factor for this type of structure i shall go ahead with 4 only not 5 importance factor i1 as s uh, that is we can select it as 2 type of structure we can select as 2 here so when we left click on generate here here we can select the when we are selecting the zone here zone as 3 that is 0.16 response reduction factor we can select it as steel frame with the concentric braces so this is a concentric brace that we are talking about here if we are talking about the centric braces it gets increased to 5 again so basically uh, the advantage of eccentric braces is that the hinge formation gets done wherever there is intersection of the hinges sorry uh, intersection of the bracings but in this case there shall not be any hinge formation so that's, that is why we should take concentric braces and four seismically eccentric braces is a much better system as compared to the concentric braces so we can select it as all general buildings rock type as medium soil structure type as steel frame building damping ratio is percent left click on generate here so here we can also calculate the period in x and z direction also so as per the is 1893 left the foundation we can uh, you know like left it as as it is and then left click on add here self factor is one and uh, we can left click on load cases details we can enter seismic elx ELZ then we can select dead load here we can select live load and then after that most important load that is wind load WLX and WLZ so we can left click on ELX we can go to this uh, seismic loads option X direction as 1 similarly we can go with ELZ seismic load z direction is 1 so when we can left click on dead load then we can enter self weight why usually it is entered as 10% uh, extra for the connections so we can left click on assign to view and yes after that for live load we can assess where exactly uh, you know like our live load can come So these are the areas where uh, the live loading can come so we can press ctrl plus g we can name it as group one floor and uh, we can select all the members here left click on associate after that we can select all the members here left click on uh, this group as two left click on four and left click on associate then we can again create a new group three here we need to select floor and left click on associate for the top frame where you know like there is this real purpose of this wash tower so basically on all of this area live loading can come so all those uh, you know like the practice is that this area is usually uh, either inhabited by two maximum two to three people not more than that 
but conservatively what we can do is that we can assign live loading of let us say 3 k kilonewton per meter square so in this case what we need to do here is that we do need to select first of all this part here and when we are not uh, you know like clicking on this member here form a group for this particular arrangement here left click on 4 floor and left click on associate and then select the remaining members here some of you might be thinking why we are following this approach so basically the reason for this approach is that we don't want to apply the live loading on this particular part here that is 1.5 by 1.05 because this is this is the part that we have left for the staircase and this is basically a cutout here so what i mean to say is that this by this member is a cut out so with this approach that is by selecting this part and then by selecting this part we uh, can skip apply uh, the application loading on this particular part here so we can left click on dead load again let us say uh, the checker plate needs to be installed on the all of these floors here so we can go to calculator let us say the thickness of checker plate is 8 mm so we can left click uh, so we can enter 0 0.008 into steel density that is 7850 kg per m cube so this is 62.8 kg per meter square that is uh, 0.63 kilonewton newton per meter square or we can enter 0.65 kilonewton per meter square so we can left click on add here low load group we can enter minus 0 0.65 here left click on add then again add 3 4 and 5 and when we left click here here we can see that the unloading is applied uh, everywhere else but not on this particular part here similarly uh, wherever there is a platform we have applied uh, the loading for the checkered plate similarly we shall apply the loading of uh, the live lo loading also so conservatively as, as I had discussed that uh, although the loading needs to be less than uh, 2 kg 2 kilo per meter square but conservatively we can ap apply flow load here we can select 3 kilonewton newton per meter square so now we are done with the dead load and live load loading also we are done with the seismic loading also but not uh, completely done because we do need to update the seismic definition also after that we can enter the wind definition here also so wind let us suppose the vendor says that because this is a you know like typical arrangement that is the vendor of these type of structures do not go to the designer again and again that and uh, they want to design this uh, tower for let us say a uh, area where the wind velocity is 50 meter per second or where the wind velocity is 40 meter per second they generalize it that is a particular tower can bear the wind force of let us say 1.5 kilonewton per meter square so we can left click here and then we can enter 1.5 kilonewton per meter square up to the height of 20 so left click on add here and then one here we can calculate the wind loading also as per the indian standards that i had already explained in the other lectures that how we can calculate this wind loading but uh, or typically we can apply this type of loading so we can go to wind load x here we can left click on wind load and we can left click on open structure and uh, i must say that not, uh, the complete structure is not open in this particular area the wind shall behave in a different manner that is this particular area shall be uh, covered uh, on all the four sides so what we can do here is that we can assign the wind loading up to the height of 12 meters so we can left click on wind load here wire range we can select it as maximum 12 left click on open structure and add so with this approach we have applied open structure loading on only on the bottom part So similarly we can apply the wind load on the z direction also.
so now we do need to calculate the wind loading for the topmost part here so what we can do here is that we can calculate the effective contributory area and then accordingly we can apply the udl so let us say the uh, the contribution of this uh, you know like column is up to 1.5 meter only and this column is also up to 1.5 meter only that is the columns uh, when the wind will strike on this particular surface area here 50 percent wind will be transmitted uh, transferred here and 50 percent will be wind will be transferred here so what we can do in this case is that we can left click on wind load x so here we can enter the member loads we can enter global x here we can enter 3 into uh, that is 1.5 into 1.5 that is the wind pressure is 1.5 kN per meter square into the contributor area for this column is also 1.5 that is 2.25 should be the udl so we can enter 2.25 direction we can enter global x and then left click on add here and then we can select both of these members here so similarly we can apply this uh, some contribution on the lever side also that this is the windward side and this is the lever side most of the cases it do happens that the uh, this uh, in the case of high wind the window here must be closed but what if this window is open some uh, you know like uh, loading can also come on the lever side also so what we can do is that we can apply wind load and uh, x sorry a member load uniform force global direction is x let us say only 50 percent loading gets transferred to the lever side so we can enter 1.125 and then left click on add here so we can left click on assign to circuit beams and yes similarly we can go to the wind load along z and similar behavior we can do for the both of these members so what we can do is that we can go to the editor to save our time select member loads here instead of x we can enter z here so here we can see that now the wind load is automatically applied for the lever side also but uh, there is this one small thing what we can do here is that what basically we need to do is that we need to apply this loading on this particular member here so left click on this member here left click on toggle load so with this point what we can do is that the loading gets removed and similarly we toggle the load here now we need to apply 1.125 to this member and 2.25 to this member here so now the loadings are now correct so now we have applied the wind loading also so now coming back to the main point main content of this lecture that is p delta analysis for this type of member so that is why i have put uh, less focus on all of these load calculations and i want to put more focus on how to do the p delta analysis correctly so as i had uh, told you earlier also that when we are defining going for auto load combination there is an option called create repeat load cases so when we are doing the p delta uh, analysis that is second order elastic analysis it is also called uh, second order that is uh, uh, it is not first order and then it is an elastic analysis so we can left click on this indian code here general structures and generate loadings so we can go ahead with uh, 1.5 times dead plus uh, live it is okay but uh, this 5 and 6 in minus direction that we can avoid in this uh, particular scenario here as our structure is symmetrical on all the four sides so if a member is you know like stable from this side that that member must be stable on the uh, opposite side because on all the four sides the members are same so we can avoid this minus sign here and we can left click on add here so here we can see that and uh, the load a new load pattern is formed a lo sorry a new load case is, is formed not a load combination is form formed so that is the main advantage of the repeat loading command so this is the number one step of this uh, uh, behavior uh, and after that 
we can go to the editor file and I always tell people that they should always name these load combinations. I do see various people they don't you know like name this load combinations but uh, for the detailed analysis when we are checking the results this saves us a lot of time. So this is basically the syntax of the repeat loading here we can see that the load name is uh, given like we are entering here and then after that just uh, the name is given and then repeat load 3 4 and 6 that is the load number here that is this is the load case 3 this is the load case 4 and this is the load case 6 and after that the load uh, you know like factor is written here so 3 4 uh, 5 1.2 1.2 1.2 means that 1.2 times 3 of 3 that is dead load 1.2 times of live load and 1.2 times of WLX. So now we are done with the load combinations and after that we should go to the analysis. Here we can uh, see the options of P-delta analysis. So here we can enter the number of iterations as 20 and uh, we can untick on uh, the small delta option here. We can left click on all here and then left click on add here. So now the speed delta analysis that is large delta is only entered here not small delta. So before we enter the design parameters in the structure uh, we should uh, first of all do the basic analysis and then check that whether the structure is showing some correct behavior or not. So first of all we can go to the analyze and run analy analysis. we can go to the post processing and displacement and summary so here we can see that there is an this is an obnoxious displacement that is being happening here the this point is going uh, down by 0 0.6 meters so that is practically not possible so there must be some error in either in the specifications or in the property type that we can check here so we can go to this view so in this part we can see that the specifications are not entered here so we can assign the specifications also here we need to assign start mymz and here we need to assign end mymz similarly we should assign the releases for the top platforms also end mymz and start mymz As the angle sections are very weak in bending so what we basically need to do here to avoid the excessive displacements is that we do need to change these members to the channel sections here 
because channels are very much uh, you know like strong in bending so we can left click on these members here we can go to section database we can go to this uh, British channel and we can select CH 150, 75 and 80 to, for all of these members here and after that what we can do is that we can select the platform on the top so to avoid the same type of error or warnings here so what we can do is that we can assign this main member as 150, 75, 18 These small members can be uh, this uh, 75, 75, 8. So after that, what we need to do here is that we need to go to the uh, this uh, load and definition here, because conservatively we are taking the very high loading here we can decrease this loading to minus 1.5 only and for this maintenance purposes we can select 100 kg per meter square only change it to 1.0 only and on the top we can change it to 1.5 because there are no such strict guidelines regarding the behavior but if this ex excessive or conservative loading is destabilizing the structure then it is no use to you know like stabilize the structure with the excessive conservative loadings and also we do need to copy this uh, dead load into the seismic loading options so we need to select all of these options here and then we need to enter all the data here So now we can again do the analysis. So we can go to the post processing. And here we can see that now the displacements are somewhat practical here. So basically the reason was that uh, uh, we were you know like providing the very uh, weak sections. But our the main purpose of this you know like lecture was to study the effect of the um, p delta analysis that how the displacements get increased. So let us suppose that this uh, an, uh, under the case of this p delta the displacement is 17.383 and uh, along z it is 13.861. Now we need to check the same for the without p delta analysis. So what we can do we can go to this. Uh, add it as a comment and then add perform analysis go to the post processing mode so here we can see that uh, Initially it was 17.383 but now it is 17.06 and it was 13 point uh, uh, it was somewhat higher value as compared to this uh, 13.769 value so we can this is a simple comparison that uh, how the structure uh, you know like the displacements do get added similar is the case with the uh, this reactions and bending moments at the bottom also so that we shall discuss in the later on lectures but it was just a simple practical example that how displacements do get uh, carried or how displacement do get added although this uh, displacement that has been you know, like contracted is not much but in the case of the areas where the wind force is very high and the structure is very slender in our case the structure itself is very stable so that is why you are not able to see much effect on this uh, displacement where there is a very minor effect in this displacement when, when the structure is very slender 
or the structure is very small in area and it is very tall in that case p delta effects are very very high so i shall always uh, you know like recommend for tall shield structures always do the p delta analysis and after that uh, we can go to this uh, design command phase and we can go to steel here we can enter is 807 2007 lst define parameters here we can enter general beams cmy uh, we can enter 0.9 cmz also we can enter 0.9 dj1 dj2 is also a very lengthy command that i had explained in the previous lectures we can consider the, the yield strength of steel as 250 LZ we can enter for uh, these members here we can also enter mean 180 for the main members 250 for the secondary members and 350 for the bracings so we can enter assign to view Although the CMY CMZ is 0 0.9 by default for the I sections, so sorry for the steel sections des being designed as per the industry standard, so we really not need to define CMY and CMZ. So we can enter the main 180 here for the main columns. It is this particular arrangement here. So we can go to design, steel, and main 180. After that, we can enter. 250 for on these members here and 350 for all the bracings After that we can go to commands and check code and we can enter also calculate the steel structural steel that is being used in the structure so we can calculate the steel takeoff and we can check the structure as per the Indian standards so again we can go to analyze and an analysis this is one thing that we have missed that we also need to define the LZ commands So we can calculate the length of these members here. So we need to enter here LZ as 3.75, 4.5 and 5.25. So we can select LZ 3.75 for these two members, 4.5 for these two members and 5.25 for this member here we also need to check that whether we need uh, ly command also so here we can see that this is the bracing that gives us the perfect example of why we should use the ly command so basically in along z direction consider this uh, you know like uh, you are applying a udl on this bracing here so in the application of uh, udl along the major axis it will bend like this but there is no restraint for the uh, you know like bracing when the uh, wind loading is being applied here so in this type of uh, bracing we also need to enter the ly command so here we need to enter lys 4.26 we can left click on after current and add so because if we don't select the after current then it will create a new parameter so that we should always avoid people are very much confused about how we can use ly and lz command 
so this is the perfect example where we can you know like easily understand where exactly we should use the ly command and where exactly we should use the lz command in addition we have not assigned any ly and lz to the members on the top so here we need to define uh, go to define parameters lz here we need to enter 3 left click on auto current and add So here we can select the main members here. And uh, after that, uh, these members does not need to be defined any uh, L, Y and L, Z. So here also we do need to you know like again go to the editor file because this is just a simple analysis so let us also check the warnings here so this is also you know like a very mist uh, mistake that, uh, that I have seen being done by engineer with 10 to 15 years of experience also what they do is that they simply ignore this warning in this warning it is saying that the value of moment application factors k y kz is greater than 1.4 for member number 48 so second order elastic analysis must be performed as per section 4.4.2 of is 18 2007 so also ensure the type of combination used is repeat load or reference load ensure the load combination syntax except for response vector or load cases so there are various concepts that you know like this uh, warning is being uh, showing us uh, here number one concept is that the reference load or repeat load cannot be used with the response spectrum load cases so if we are uh, you know like using the dynamic load cases then we cannot use the repeat load conceptually we can but this is the considered as a uh, you know like weakness of stat that repeat load cannot be used with the response vector load cases after that second order elastic analysis that is a p delta analysis uh, as we had switched off the syntax for the p delta analysis and we are just doing the simple perform analysis so that is why this error is being shown here and this is also advised as per section 4.4.2 of ISAT in 2007 that we do need to do the p delta analysis in case of in some case the member this k by kz value of a member becomes greater than 1.4 so we can go to this editor file again here we can switch on this command and switch off this command again we can go to the analysis and then we can run the analysis to check that what exactly is the scenario which members are passing and which members are failing in the design so we can go to the post processing to see the overall structural stability overall structure stability is somewhat okay and uh, first of all we should start with the broad members so here we can see that there is this very high margin in, in this member here there is also very uh, good margin here very good margin here overall the structure is designed conservatively on a very higher side so in the next lecture we shall learn how we can do the optimization of uh, this type of arrangement here so in this lecture we shall learn how we can you know like uh, do the cost optimization for this type of structure so here we can see that only 13 percent of the member capacity is being utilized so here we can see that only 89 kilonewton forces coming down here and negligible moments are being coming here so for 89 kilonewton force tentatively single 100 section is also sufficient that we can check 100 110 So here we can see that still only 32% of utilization is being done but whether there is any you know like increase in the displacement the increase in displacement is al also very negligible.
so what we can do in this case is that we can decrease the size of this angle to 75 75 and 8 So now we can see that now the ratio is good that is it is going up to the 72 percent utilization so if we want to still increase the utilization we can change it to 75 75 and 6 and be, but before that we also want to economize this pricing here so that is so what we can do is that just uh, change the uh, pricing size to single angle of ch uh, channel here and for this pricing we can either go for 50 double angle and for this member what we can do is that for this particular bracing we can add a new section here British angle UA5055. So we can select uh, the size of these bracings as 5055 only. So now we can analyze the structure again. Now we can check again the behavior. Here we can see that now it is going up to the 93% utilization. So that is a very good utilization, I should say. Cause most of the times my util uh, the my tendency is to you know like have the utilization in between 90 to 95% is only. Here also we can see that again it is uh, very much on the higher side. Cause very less forces coming here. That is only 1.58 kilonewton forces coming. Here also we can see that the Bracing is also very much on the higher side. Here also the time member it is showing very uh, high margins here. Here also we can see that only 35 uh, 35 percentage is the ratio. So what we can do for this member is that we can uh, in decrease it to 75 75 6. So again we can anal analyze the structure. So she structures we do need to analyze structure again and again so here we can check the ratio again so now it is failing in the design so here we can see that uh, the ratios are now increased to 1.68 so in this case uh, as an experiment what we can do is that we can try for 50 double angle and in the meantime on the top we had provided 60 65 uh, double angle bracing so that same procedure we can also follow here So here we can see that the ratio here is 68 percent so that is a, not a very uh, bad ratio that is also not a very good ratio but in this uh, uh, bracing it is failing in the design so we do need to increase the size of this particular section here so that we can do later on but overall uh, for this also we can check this is also showing a very high uh, you know like margin but the ratio is also 289 so we cannot it is not desirable to increase the size of this bracing because after uh, increasing the size it might happen that this uh, uh, the members may fail in the slenderness also so this is also getting uh, passed with very high margin so first of all we should also check the flooring arrangement here so here we can see that there is a very high margin in the beams here so it is uh, utilization is only up to 14 percentage 
so we don't need to create a balance between the displacement that is uh, settlement here we can see that the y is ma maximum is approximately 43 mm here so uh, it is also again showing some sort of instability here so to avoid this instability what we can do we can go to this view here basically the reason for this excessive displacement at this particular point are the uh, releases so what in this case what we can do is that we can remove the this uh, specifications for these particular members here so we are basically saying to the start that these are the moment connections not the shear connections so that uh, the settlement can be or the deflection can be avoided at uh, these two points and if required we can also remove the you know like uh, this uh, releases at this point so let us check that whether the deflection is under control now or not you go to select by specifications and all field beams so here we can see that this uh, member is failing in the design because we have already <laughs> initially we checked only this member here so this was getting passed but this member is already getting failed in the design so what we can do is that we can go to general property just change it to US 75, 75, 6 and double angle and then we can check what are the members that are failing in the design and uh, this bracing was also getting failed so what we can do is that we can assign the same property of uh, this vertical members to this bracing also so now we can check whether the structure is now passed or not You need to select by specifications and all failed beams. So only these two members are now getting failed. So basically in slenderness it is uh, failing by somewhat high margin. So what we can do for this type of scenario is that as we can know that this is the member of very least importance. So initially they were assigned 250 slenderness. But we can toggle the sign and we can select minus 350 for these two members here and now in the next run you shall see that these members are, shall get passed in the slenderness because we are allowing high slenderness for these uh, time members here so we can go to select by specifications and all field beams so we can see that uh, now the whole structure is passed we can go for the deflection answers so here also you can see that now the deflection is under control initially we were getting very high uh, this uh, displacement here but now we are not getting any displacement here. so that was advantage of you know like uh, removing the releases at uh, the cantilever sections here this is the platform and the settlement at this point is not a, a big deal uh, sorry set displacement at this point is not a big deal so overall if we you know, uh, i must say that there is a lot of scope still in this transmission sorry wash tower to economize but uh, due to the shortage of length of the lecture i am restricting my lecture up to this point only in the end we shall know how we can check the weight of the steel structure also so we can uh, open the output file here we can go to the results and we can uh, left click on steel takeoff here so here we can see that the total weight of this watch tower is 48.881 kN in that channel 150 is taking up to 8.4 kN that is if we uh, open the calculator here 
for 8.4 kN newton means that 8.4 divided by 9.81 so it means that 0.85 kilo uh, sorry 8 0.85 ton is approximately 850 kg so to total weight is approximately 49 kN newton divided by uh, 9.81 so the total weight of this uh, watch tower is approximately 5 metric ton. 1 ton has basically 9.81 kilo newton. So that is why I am dividing all the values by 9.81. So the total weight of this watch tower is approximately 5 metric ton. In this uh, 5 we should add, add the connection weight also. That is we can add 10% of this uh, or 15% so we can enter 5 plus 0 0.75 so approximately this watch tower uh, can get constructed in 6 metric ton of structural steel members but I must say that 6 metric ton is also still very high uh, you can reduce this weight to approximately 4 metric ton so we can uh, do various permutation and combinations also we can uh, change the arrangement also and check where we can have the maximum utilization basically our purpose is to have our utilization in the range of 80 to 90 only that is 0 0.8 to 0 0.9 so here also we can see that now this ratio is good uh, this ratio is somewhat on the lesser side but as our structure is economical and basically the reason for this behavior is that on this side there is this uh, platform here so that is why this is showing larger ratio and this is showing the lower ratio but in this case where we can see that the ratio is 81 and in this case it should be lesser that is 74 so this this is a simple math that we are doing here basically overall software is the second thing your engineering judgment is the first and topmost priority try to correct your perceptions regarding the structure the more you practice on structures the more comfortable you should get so the conclusion of this lecture was that uh, my recommendation shall always be whenever we are designing tall height steel structures or large cantilever structures always go ahead with this uh, uh, repeat loads do not uh, uh, enter the load combinations and the second thing is while analysis always go with the p delta analysis that is the second order elastic analysis so up to this lecture you have learned how we can enter do the perform how we can perform the cable analysis how we can perform the advanced cable analysis how we can do the p delta analysis so similarly we can also enter the small delta in small delta the it shall also consider the geometric imperfection of the structural steel member but uh, big p delta is much more dominant as compared to the small p delta so i am closing my lecture here so in the next lectures we shall learn something more interesting